This is a 2013 Dodge Grand Caravan. It's been my home for the last three years, although I only actually built it out one year ago, and I bought it because of all the extra room from the stow and go seats, and because they're relatively affordable. It's also super stealthy since it's just a minivan and I have nothing on the roof giving it away as a camper van, so I can literally sleep just about anywhere. So the van has two main modes. I have town mode that I use for what I'm either like traveling a lot or running around the city. And then I also have like a full camp mode that I use if I'm gonna be like in one location for a while. And that's way more comfortable but it takes longer to set up. So I only do that if I'm gonna be like spending multiple days or longer in one location. I do have the capability to be in one spot for almost two weeks. I'm really only limited by water. I think I have 16 gallons of storage right now. I've got two six gallon water jugs in the trunk, which I'll show you in a minute. And then a four gallon one that I keep like in the front of the car that I use most of the time. On the outside of the van, I only made two changes. One was adding the bike rack to the factory roof rails, and two was upgrading the tires. I went to discount tire and just asked them to put the largest size tire on there that they could. The bigger tires have been huge. That's probably the best thing that I did to this van. This spot is like really rocky and my old tires were worn out. So I think I gained close to like two inches of clearance just by putting these tires on there. And I did go with a slightly better tire, which I highly recommend. If you're in a van, like you're probably driving a lot and it's your home. So you want that extra like stopping power and the extra traction that you'll get. So if you have the budget for it, definitely try to put like better tires on it. I don't know if you know this about discount tire, but they'll fix any flat tire for free. I get a lot of nails and stuff from being in spots like this. I always make it a point to like pick up nails anytime I'm in a campsite. And this is only a fraction of how many nails are actually out here. It's, it's insane, honestly. People come out here and have pallet fires. So all those nails just fall out of the pallets and man, they make a mess. Now I'll show you the inside of the van and show you town mode. So this is town mode and it's how the van looks if I'm like spending a lot of time in cities or if I'm moving around and traveling a lot and not really base camping at places. I also drive DoorDash sometimes to make extra money so I can have the bike and everything inside the van, super secure and still be able to like cook and live and work comfortably. I have just a little cheap propane stove down here. A pot that I keep here so that I can cook and eat well. I'm in the gym parking lot right now. I was just lifting and showered. And then all my food is kept down here in the floor, which I'll show you a little better in a minute. Here I have my table. I think it's $40 from Walmart. And this has definitely been one of my better purchases. It has a bunch of different settings. So it'll incline or decline, I should say, at three different angles, which is perfect for working on the computer. And then I have a lap desk here that I'll use for when I'm like editing video and have my little speed editor here so I can have this set up or my drawing tablet for when I'm doing a lot of photo work. And then I can just sit here and do my work from literally anywhere, which is amazing. Down here, I have my batteries so I can just easily charge the computer or anything else that I need to charge. And when I am in town, if I'm like sleeping in Walmarts and stuff like that, the bike goes on the roof. I feel really secure with it up there, especially it does have a lock. And being that it is on the roof, it would be really hard to steal without me like hearing them or getting woken up. It's not always easy to get the bike up there and it's definitely not easy for somebody to just like take it down and steal it. I uh, put the seat behind the paracord up there to help keep it a little more secure when I'm driving. All right, you guys gotta move for me. I'm running out of daylight really fast. So I'm gonna show you guys the trunk. So back here, I just built like a really simple cabinet and it ended up working perfectly that my Goal Zero Boulder 100 briefcase solar panel fits right here in the door with just some simple budgies to help hold it in place. So once this is out, now I have access to extra storage under here. So I've got like my tarp, I've got my backpacks and I have way too many backpacks. <laughs> Look at that. That's three backpacks right there. And then my camera bag and day packs. I've got way too many. And then I've got like boots and 
climbing gear, a bunch of like books and old journals and stuff and a dry bag here to keep them secure. Snow chains in there, just in case. I've never needed to use them, but I came close in Flagstaff. I was up there doing some work and got stuck in winter because that's the best part about van life is being able to just pick up and move anywhere you want and like come down here when, when it gets cold somewhere. Bike packing bags and I've got like extra bike packing gear, stoves and other stuff in there, climbing shoes, harness and all my climbing gear, bike tools so I can fix anything on my bike. I've got a little buddy heater, which I don't really use too much. It's actually, it's way too much heat for that little van and you have to like really ventilate it a lot. So you have to have the windows down so much and the fan blowing and then you're bringing in so much cold air just to run it that it's like really kind of awkward. I was also using it Flagstaff, so I was over 7,000 foot. So the low oxygen sensor kept tripping, which was probably the reason I needed to like have all the extra windows and stuff open. But yeah, that's my experience with the little buddy in there. Got my yoga mat right here, foam roller. I've got my stove here, which is a Camp Chef Everest 2X. And that thing has really been phenomenal. I started with a, a Coleman, I think it was a Triton or something like that. But from all the rattling of the van, I don't know, some screws or something came out of it and it stopped working. So I returned it and then just bought the, the better stove. I've got my sleeping bag, which I just keep in its stuff sack right here. Kohler, which is just a Yeti. And that'll keep ice, like block ice. Block ice is definitely the way to go. It'll keep ice for about a week usually. Got hiking sticks in the back here. I've got like my drill. I've got a little portable shower my climbing helmet, my like, you know, hard hat. I've got a ground mat, is my toilet, a luggable loo. I generally prefer to dig cat holes when I can, but this is great for like, I mean, if I'm in busy spots where there's no privacy or I don't know if I just really have to go or don't feel like digging a hole or whatever, but this, I just keep cat litter in there. And then I use garbage bags. So I just like put a couple scoops of cat litter in the garbage bag. Fold it out over the top. I keep like toilet paper and the garbage bags all right in there. And then when I'm done, I just like tie it up and then double bag it using the same bag, drop it back in here and it's good to go. I just throw it in a dumpster when I'm done. As another famous YouTuber said, when you pick up your dog's poop, they want you to put it in the dumpster. That's what I do. And I've had babies and probably a lot of people watching this have had babies. And if you've ever had baby, what do you do with their goodies? Well, you put it in the dumpster. So waste can go into the dumpster. And as far as I'm concerned, my waste is as good as anybody's waste and uh, it can go in the dumpster. <laughs> Your mileage may vary. Maybe I'll even cut that part out, but yeah. Kettlebell, I love swinging that thing around. And then these are my water jugs. They're empty right now because I fly to Belgium in just a few days now. So I haven't needed them. I don't want to just like keep the water in there, drive around with all that extra weight for no reason. These are tarp poles to help set up the tarp and like pitch it nice and high. This is my table, another ground mat. And then I got the shovel for cat holes, whole bunch more just like random stuff that kind of fits underneath the edge of the bed platform. An extra little solar panel that I use with my like small Yeti 200X. I don't use this much anymore. I'll probably end up selling it. It's like a tire patch kit here, a plug kit in case I'm like somewhere and can just plug it real quick. And if I had to put the spare on in a place like this, I don't know that I would get out without bottoming out my van and breaking it. So that's a slight concern when I come into like crazy deep spots like this. That's pretty much it for the trunk there. Now that I just pulled everything apart. All right, let's see. So that's what the bike looks like on the roof. And here's the little just cable lock. It's not the most secure. It would be really easy to cut and steal. But like I said, I only leave it up here if I'm gonna be able to like keep an eye on it. And that's one of the reasons I went with a roof rack is because when I'm in like grocery stores or just like running into places really fast, it's really easy to see from the store so I can keep a like pretty good eye on it up there. Also, it was just cheaper. This van came with factory roof rails on it. So I could just mount the $200 bike rack on it instead of having to like install a hitch and then still buy a rack back there. With a heavy bike, it's a super pain in the butt, but with a nice light bike like this one, it's really easy. I'm also tall. All right, let me show you the heart of the van. So my no build couch bed setup is really the heart of this thing. I already had the crash pad, so it was super easy. And then it's dual purpose. I can like move this thing around. I can 
chill outside, lay it out if I just wanna like lay under the stars or read a book or lay in the sun. I mean, you get the idea, right? And then it's real easy to just brush it off. I keep a brush just clipped right here to the side of the van. And I also have a small vacuum cleaner. So if it gets really dirty, I can clean it pretty easy, but generally I don't worry about it, especially with the floor mats. So when it's time to go to bed, I slide the table over here and then the couch just folds out into a bed. And I keep a couple of these like, I don't know what they are, just like sticky cloth things to help keep it from sliding around. And then this flips down, the mattress slides out. <laughs> and then I've got a full length bed. Yeah, you can see I'm like six foot one and it's pretty perfect. It's a twin size mattress, but it works out with the crash pad to be closer to a full I think my girlfriend's gonna be moving in, I think in the spring around April. So I might end up getting like a bigger piece of memory foam or something so that we just have a little more room with it. In the windows here, I made coverings using Reflectix and I backed them with Gorilla Tape so that when I'm in cities, it's like fully blacked out so that it's just way less conspicuous. And it's great too for when I'm here and the sun is blazing, I can just use the silver Reflectix side and put that in the window and then it keeps the van a lot cooler. I store them right along the side of the bed here. In the front, I've got these just pop-up window shades. I bought these from Walmart and they're, I don't know, I think they were like 10 or 12 bucks, but it came with two of them. So they just like perfectly fit in the side of the window here and that'll block out the windows, give me a little more privacy using the black side or I'll use the silver side again just to reflect that sunlight back out if I need to. All right, let me flip the couch back up, show you what that looks like. And there it is, back in a couch again. All right, can you guys see the floor here? Yeah, you can. So on the floor, this is where all the food and stuff lives. I got a coffee grinder, which has been one of my favorite purchases because I do love coffee, especially fresh coffee. And then I keep the coffee in these bins. They got a little pop top and then there's coffee kept nice and fresh. It's got like a seal on there to help keep it even fresher. Oh, that smells good. Do you guys love coffee too? I have another one of these, a second one. And I keep rice in this one. Let me just bring you inside here and give you a better look in the floor. I've got this just bin down here. I already had it from when I had the no build setup. So I just like cut the top of it so that it fits in here better. And this is my food bin. So, you know, I just got like produce, spaghetti sauce, peanut butter, all that kind of stuff. I got tea, salt that just fits right here. Little filters for my arrow press there. I've got oil, and then this here's my whole spice rack. So I've just got, yeah, a whole bunch of spices in there. Mac and cheese and potatoes and a whole lot of beans. I eat a lot of beans, a lot of beans and rice. I've even got popcorn in there, which I don't make super often, but I do keep a little, what do you call them? A little pocket rocket in there just for emergencies. Like right now I ran out of propane today. So this is nice to have when I do Something silly like that. And Pringles, because I love potato chips. I apologize, the van's a total mess right now. In the other side of the floor is where I keep stuff that I don't use quite as often. It's also where I store my laundry, which I just keep in a contractor bag. <laughs> I've not done laundry in so long, so I've got this giant freaking bag of clothes. I'm actually kind of surprised that I have that many clothes. I've got a whole bin in there of just backpacking food that's like left over and I tend to just collect it and buy it when it's on sale so they have it because I do a lot of backpacking and bikepacking. Bunch of random stuff. <laughs> Reflector for photography, extra hard drive, backup storage there, Q-tips, pots and pans, more cordage. I've got my stove there, or not my stove, but my pot. That's my work bag. And here is my 10 gallon propane tank, which I highly recommend. 
that's a huge upgrade from those one pound little propane bottles. I really hate those things because they just create so much waste. They also are hard to find these days with COVID and they cost a whole lot of money. I can fill that whole 10 gallon propane tank there I think for like seven or eight dollars and you'll pay that for like what, one or two of those one pound containers. These things are like rated to a much higher standard so I feel way more secure having having that guy in there. And I do make sure to always shut off the valve here at the top and generally disconnect it when I'm not using it. That way I don't have to worry about any leaks or anything like that. Over here, I have a paper towel roll that I just have on a, these are like bed sheet things. And I just have them like connected to the seat belt. I have my lap desk stored here. And then more Reflectix window coverings. I've had them for over a year now and you can see like they've been working out super well for me. And then just a watch that stopped working that my brother gave me, it has sentimental value. And then I use the paracord that I have run up here for like clothes storage. I have bear spray here. I mean, for like when I'm backpacking in grizzly country. This is a bear print. We hope we see one, but from far away. And also just for like protection. And then I keep like my journal, my iPad. This iPad has been one of my favorite purchases. I got the, the kind that uses like a cell phone card in it so that I can, you know, <laughs> do any kind of like media streaming. I can watch like, I don't know, Disney Plus. I have that with my phone account or YouTube or anything I wanna watch. I've been at HBO for a little while so I could watch like Game of Thrones and stuff like that. And then also when I'm like on trail or traveling, I can use it to like edit and make videos and do my work. Another just like notebook, a book. Got my little Leo plant here. Oh, I bought with Ilsa on our road trip and they're not looking too good. Ilsa really needs to get back here to help me take care of them little guys. And then I've got way too many hats. There's like hats stashed back here. A little broom so I can keep the van clean. I've got my 100 watt DeWalt inverter over here and I keep my lights just always connected to it. It has like a USB port in there. And then down here I have it plugged into my Goal Zero batteries so that I can just plug this in here and charge that off the battery when I'm not using solar, when I'm just driving around. You can see I keep my spoon tucked into the window there and also a fork, which helps secure the calendar as well. And that calendar is not up to date. I've not checked off nearly a week now. I've got my Lucy lantern string lights, something like that. And they just click on and off with a simple little button there. And then I have the lights just tucked into the into the ceiling. So you can see I just have them run the entire way around the van and they do a really great job of lighting this thing. And then I've got my Yuko candle lanterns, which I really love. These is one of my favorite things in this van. For at night, like candlelight is so nice. It creates the best ambiance. I clip them up here to the, what do you call this? So like the coat hook or something? Cause when they're down here, they swing around and I broke one like this. It, smashed and broke the globe. I've got a little battery powered fan. It's, you can see, O polar, something like that. But it's got three different settings. On low, I think it'll run for like, I wanna say 40 hours. It's got a 10,000 milliamp hour battery, so it runs for a really long time and then easily charges or is powered by USB-C. So that's great. On the back of the seats, I just have hung like an old camera bag that the zipper is kind of failing on. And then in here I keep like my toothbrush and honestly it's just a bunch of stuff really. It's kind of a drunk drawer at this point. Uh, yeah, it's mostly like camera stuff and an extra headlamp. Got that tea kettle connected to a carabiner just right on the back of the seat there. Another camera bag of course. And this is my actual camera bag so that's where like my lenses and stuff live in there. Nice hatchet here in the back of the seat. Here, I keep like all my cooking stuff. So I've got two cutting boards, I guess actually three cutting boards, I've got too many cutting boards. And then like spatulas and spoons. I've got a carbon monoxide detector, which is very important. You definitely wanna have that just in case, especially if you're running like heaters and stoves inside the van. And then for garbage, I just keep a bag hooked right on the back of the seat there. I had a garbage can for a while, but I think I ended up getting rid of it. I don't know, it was just more trouble than it was worth. Down here, I keep magnesium, which I love at night. It helps me sleep. 
baby wipes. This I use as like a measuring cup for rice and that kind of stuff. I've got more Gorilla Tape. I've got all the storage in here. I do keep extra candles for my candle lantern in there. Mostly a drum bin, a drum drawer, stuff I don't use super often. And then I got like books and stuff stored on the other side there. And I got a Bluetooth speaker, which is crucial. I keep a four gallon water container. And this thing is nice because it's super easy to just move around anywhere I need it to go. And then in the front of the car here, I've got my gym bag. So I just keep my towel, which always lives in there, just like a little microfiber towel or whatever. And then my like toiletry kit, soap, shampoo, all that good stuff, extra clothes, Patagonia duffel bag. I keep all my clothes and I just keep them in like stuff sacks. So this is all socks. I've got so many socks now, which means I can go a long time without doing laundry. Socks aren't supposed to like <laughs> hold their shape. And then I've got these packing cubes, which I highly recommend to stay organized. So that one's all shirts. I've got another one with pants and stuff. And you can see like that black reflector. And I've got two sunshades in the window there. I use the black side facing out when I'm like in Walmart or parked wherever and I need to be like inconspicuous. And then I put the silver side there when I'm like camped out here in the desert or whatever. And I need to reflect that light back but I do like having the two just because it covers the window better and just adds a little extra insulation. It can get quite hot here sometimes. What else? I keep shoes just tucked in the window. Oh boy, we're almost totally out of daylight. And this is super blue from being inside there, but let me try to show you over here. Do we have enough light? Barely, maybe I can get a, a headlamp. All right, there we go. Can you still see me? <laughs> Probably not really. In the door here, I keep cleaning supplies. The window get really messy from having the windshade up there. It just gets like a bit of a residue on there. Window cleaner, some Febreze, so it smells nice. I got Armor All wipes, which are great to keep in here just to help get the dust and just kind of keep the, you know, the van clean and nice. And then more just like storage space over there. I've got more like photo gear in here is a camera that I am selling and just stuff like that. I've got more stuff stored under the seat there. This is where like my little sweeper, my vacuum cleaner lives down there. So you can see I have a little bit of light leak through the windows, but I don't really worry about it. I don't tend to sleep places that I'm not supposed to. And if I do, I just don't really run the lights in here and I make sure to like get in late, go to sleep, and then I'm out early. But most of the time I'm sleeping in like Walmarts or casino parking lots or like places I'm actually allowed to sleep. It's not very often I get knocks. I generally try to avoid that. I think that's about it right now. We're totally out of light. If you guys have any questions or anything like that, leave them in the comments below. I would love to hear your feedback. Maybe you even have some suggestions on how I can make this thing better. It's still a work in progress and I'll probably like do a little more building here in the springtime after I get back from Belgium. But yeah, hope this helps you guys and hope you enjoy it. If you do like, comment, you know, share, do all that stuff that the YouTubers tell you to do. But uh, yeah, take care and like, Man, I'm stoked for you guys to get out there and do your own thing. So enjoy, take care, and thanks for watching.